It's time for The Spread, our weekly look at sports from a gambling perspective. And with us, as always, is former Las Vegas odds maker and current Don Best analyst, Todd Furman. Thanks for coming back, Todd. Always a pleasure, gentlemen. Plenty of great sporting events this weekend that I know we'll have a chance to dive into right here and now. Nice. Well, the Grizzlies are a five and a half point favorite at home despite being down 2-0 against the Spurs. Where do you expect the public and the sharp money to fall? Danny, this number actually opened at Memphis minus four and a half, the over under at 180. Since those numbers were posted, it's been a steady flow of money from the professionals on the Grizzlies as that number's approached six at a lot of books and also on the under, total from 180 down to 177 and a half. You'd have to imagine that Lionel Hollins is gonna make adjustments and find ways to neutralize Tony Parker, who appears to be a bit hobbled. Expect to see Tony Allen on him. I think Memphis finds a way to tighten this series up, get the win and cover in game three. All right, well, on Twitter, Todd, you routinely claim the NHL playoffs are more entertaining than the NBA playoffs. I'm sure they love you in Prince Edward Island. <laughs> now, for an average fan of both sports, which postseason is more profitable to bet on? Uh, well, I, I've been known to try and push the buttons of people on Twitter, so I get plenty of NBA defenders firing in my ear nonstop, so rest assured they don't let me hear the end of it. But from a profitability standpoint, if you're selective, I actually believe the NBA playoffs offer more betting opportunity than the NHL playoffs. The one X factor in the NHL that's so hard to gauge is a hot goalie. So if you're going to look to bet sides, you may as well try and flip coins at certain points, hoping you have the better goalie on your side. San Francisco 49ers wide receiver Michael Crab Crabtree tore his Achilles tendon earlier this week. How has that affected the Niners Super Bowl odds, a team that a lot of people had favored to go to the Super Bowl and win it? Uh, we have that discussion all the time at our Don Best offices. Spoke to lines maker Kenny White, and we both make Michael Crabtree about a half point adjustment. So over the course of the full season, you're talking about his absence probably costing the 49ers anywhere from three quarters of a game to a full game if you want to break it down. However, week to week, I think the fact that the injury happened now, it allows Coach Harbaugh to game plan accordingly, and now it makes the addition of Anquan Bolden this offseason even bigger as Colin Kaepernick's primary target. Nice. Well, the 97th running of the Indy 500 is this weekend. Who do you like in the so-called greatest spectacle in racing? Evidently, they haven't seen the turtle races in West Hartford. <laughs> well, actually, my pick to win it had a 10-spot grid penalty earlier. I really like Dario Franchitti. Thought he could repeat. But now, unless those odds are dropped and reflect the change in pole position, uh, it's going to be real tough to try and back him. I think the guy to take a look at, the pole sitter, Ed Carpenter, 10 to 1 is attractive. But I'm going to go with the family bloodlines. I'm going to look at Marco Andretti in that 7 to 8 to 1 range. I think he finds a way to win the biggest spectacle in sports. And as a tribute to him, I got my glass of ice cold milk right here. There you go. I always pictured you as a, a milk drinker there, Todd. So I'm, it's exactly what I'm like going to do. <laughs> yeah. All right. The main event at UFC 160 pits heavyweight champ Kane Velasquez against challenger Antonio Silva. Velasquez is a huge favorite coming in at minus 850. When teams and athletes are this heavily favored, is it wise to lay such steep odds? It gets pretty dangerous if you want to lay a steep price, especially in a sport like UFC where all it takes is one blow to the head and you're sitting there with a nice charitable donation with steep odds. I'm more inclined to look at series prices where it's best to seven or team sports where you can try and find an edge if you're going to lay that kind of price. I will say the books love these large favorites though, mainly because the betting public comes in on the underdog pretty consistently and they need the favorite and it's rare for them to be rooting for the so-called better fighter or better team. Todd, what are the odds this time next year I'm barefoot at an OTB? <laughs> You'll always have space on my couch here, Reese. I figure I should be asking you guys in terms of the odds, what are the chances we're still doing this come the fall and in through bowl season this year? Do you have, do you have a quarter? Yeah, right. I'll, <laughs> I'm throwing a dime on it. <laughs> All right. I don't have the other 15. So I was going to flip it. Oh, no, That's what I was going to do. Probably. That's what we heard. Coin <laughs> flip. Thank you, Todd Furman, columnist for Outkick the Coverage and Market Analyst for Don Best. You can find him on Twitter at Todd Furman. Keep that couch clear. <laughs> Always a pleasure, guys. Enjoy the holiday weekend.